My talk is set flight time synchronization system based on remotely system voltage control crystal oscillators. And first, I want to introduce the project, which is the major work I started at the US. And this project is sponsored by CASC. And the Hartford Institute is my own university, is, which is my own university, CASIC and Shanghai Astro Bunker Observatory. And Beihan University, we, we are in charge of the research and the demonstration of how the project go, goes, and uh, we provide some solutions to the key problems. And uh, the CASIC, they are in charge of the hardware design. And the Shanghai Astronomical Observatory, they are in charge of offering the crystal oscillators. So for example, it's, uh, they use the HF45 crystal oscillator, which is made by China. And the purpose of the project. Uh, this is a comparison of the uh, particular VCXO and uh, atomic clocks. Uh, we can see that the VCXO have uh, better short-term stability. Uh, they are lighter, have longer lifespan, and they are, have smaller voltage and, uh, are more, and less power consumption and uh, cheaper. So. Uh, it has many advantages to adopt a uh, VSEC as a as the reference clock of the satellite instead of atomic clocks. And uh, uh, this is my project progress uh, to develop a VSEC based uh, satellite system. First, reduce overall satellite cost, power assumption, onboard weight and volume, and improve satellite lifespan. And the second, have the satellite time physical, physically and autonomously synchronized. Third, every resource is analysis, modeling, and elimination, and both uh, guiding of the clock selection. And these are the parameters and requirements uh, provided by the sponsor. The range of uh, is, should be less than 0.6 nanosecond. The loss of parity delay uh, should be less than 0.01 nanosecond. Relative motion uh, less than 0.02 nanosecond. Local adjustment less than 0.4 nanosecond. And then the synchronization precision, the performance of the system should be better than one nanosecond. And this is the duration. As a first step uh, from November 2013 to December 2014, uh, this, uh, uh, we focus on the software design and uh, 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 provide some Concludes to support the uh, requirements. And uh, uh, from January 2015 to December 2016, uh, we focus on the hardware design and try to launch an experimental uh, satellite or test. The overall funding is nearly one million Australian dollars. My research at Axer. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I want to introduce the time synchronization. And, uh, and first of all, I uh, will can see the, the blue dash line is the reference line, uh, one PBS signal from the reference clock. And the red line is the clock, uh, clock signal from the uh, particular crystal oscillator or Atomic clock. 
music is uh, the, due to the frequency, frequency deviation. It, the PPS signal is accurate but not precise. And then in the second block, uh, it's frequency equals to the reference frequency, but they don't have the same phase deviation, so uh, it's precise and not accurate. And the third, the third clock is a perfect uh, clock. It's both accurate and precise. And at the first beginning, um, when the first time I came here, Andrew uh, told me that I can do some research on Namuru because it's, it's about timing too. Uh, this this uh, Namuru V3.2 is developed by Iman, uh, also my supervisor. There's a, he uses singular term and as a reference and the Lamuru introduced the uh, one PPS signal to a time company. So th there's a comparison of the phase deviation. Then he used the PLL, FLL, or PEI, or LQR, some control methods to control the uh, frequency sources. and some other existing methods about time synchronization. It's Grace mission. It's an, it's, it has two satellites. The so twin satellites uh, communicate and with each other over time. And that's, that's, that's is for the measurement of the, uh, the gravity of the Earth. So yeah. they also have an onboard GPS receiver to receive the position and the orbit information of the satellites. And the ranging measurement between each satellite, the information, the ranging information are sent to the ground station to process and achieve synchronization. So they don't have a voltage control crystallosity. They just uh, compute the phase deviations between two satellites and, uh, and the tell, the, uh, tell the users oh, there's, a there's a deviation and uh, you can use the time tag areas, time -tag areas to eliminate the deviation. But it's not physically eliminated. And this QZSS. Uh, Fabrizio, uh, one of Andrew's former students, he proposes a RESSOX, a remote synchronization system uh, based on crystal oscillators. In his system, he tried to use a crystal oscillator and replace, uh, uh, instead of the atomic clock, uh, uh, um, as the uh, onboard clock reference of QZS satellite. So, in order to steer the crystal oscillator on the, on the satellites, the ground station need to send the control signal to the crystal oscillators. So the QZSS sends the QZS signal, namely the GPS L1, L2, L5 signals to the ground station and there's a schematic. Uh, there's a, this is a closed loop control and this is a open loop control. You can see that uh, from the red, red blocks and this is a, this is a uh, elospheric device. Uh, According to the equation eight, we can conclude that if, if the ground station trans transmits the, the control signal to the satellites as, uh, by KU band, so there would be a elospheric delay too. 
So they just predict the velocity error and add it to the control signal. So, and the orbit delay are calculated previously in advance. So they, once the QZS signal uh, receiver receives the timing signals, it, the only thing it needs to do is adjust the uh, clock reference. And this is the Play-Doh system. Um, you can see the R tray is uh, one of the Play-Doh GEO satellites. And R0 is the ground station. So the ground station uh, transmits the reference timing signal to the uh, GEO satellites uh, by the by a dedicated two-way time, time transfer method. And this is R1. It could be MEO or IGSOs. So the MEO or IGSO satellites are synchronized to the RJ, the GEO. So the GEO could be a reference clock instead of, uh, instead of the ground station. And this is the concept, concept of the next generation Beto system. So it's undergoing. The precision would be achieved point uh, uh, 0.2 nanosecond. And this is the locator system. You can see the, there's a master, master uh, of clock at the highest position of this region. And the uh, east, west, north, south, or lower the five slaves. So it has master and slave structure. The slave set high, uh, the slave clocks are steered by the master. Uh, they use the same VCX source. And after learning about these existing systems, I proposed my my system. So, in my system, uh, the master could be uh, installed on the, on the satellites or or on the ground station, and uh, on the master side, there are receiving de device. Measurement device, transmitting device. Different from the master, um, the slave, it has a control device due to its V6 soul. So uh, they have to send the uh, ranging signals at the same time and use a dual one way ranging measurement to measure. There is a cold phase and a carrier phase frequency. So that uh, they could know the clock deviation between each other. Then the uh, VCX always steered by a PLL or some other control methods. And this is an example of my proposed system. You can see it, it has a master and a slave structure, just the same as a, a locator. Because they need a reference to, to achieve synchronization. And there are four frequencies. The reason why it has four frequencies is that uh, they have to eliminate the atmospheric delay. So different from the QZSS, I use four frequency uh, correction because because it's the most effic efficient way to eliminate atmospheric delay down. And it has n pseudo codes, n equals to the numbers of slave satellites. So it's a CDMI structure. And it's uh, 
some colors, time division, duplex. Uh, the, uh, this is because they have to send the send the writing signals at the same time, so that they can make sure the the, the, the ranging is is right. Um, the next act is the schematic of my system. You can see that um, this uh, they have all have a, both all of them have the uh, signal transmitting, signal receiving, phase shift detector. But this, uh, the master is, is just have these functions. Uh, the slave, it has the control control predictor or clock error storage or or the steering. And next, I want to introduce the clock model. Uh, XT equals to the phase deviation. And A0 is the initial phase deviation. And uh, A1 is the uh, frequency deviation. A2 is a frequency drift. It's a standard equation proposed by Adam. And phi t is a, it's normally five typical uh, face noises, white face uh, noises, blink face noises, white frequency noises, blink frequency noises, and the random walk frequency noises. And for 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 my system, uh, it's, it's unlike the. Uh, like this model. This, this is a free, mo free running model. So in my current system, I add a control signal into the model. So there's a F, FB. Uh, it's a feedback. It's because uh, why I add it here? Because, um, because for voltage control signal, the only parameter it can be changed is is uh, frequency. And T, Ti is an uh, uh, adjustment instance. And there are three ranging mirrors method, a super curve, curve smoothing, and curve phase bending. Uh, I made a simulation, and there's a comparison. Next, uh, I want to introduce the dual one-way ranging. This is a basic dual one-way ranging schematic. I suppose we have two clocks, clock, clock A and clock B. Uh, their time tag is A and B. They send, uh, send their uh, time signals at, at A and B. And after the uh, propagation, propagation delay, they receive the signals. So they can receive a random, a pseudo random measurements. So therefore, we can conclude the, the time tag errors between the two clocks. It's a, Simple theory. Uh, if the propagation delay, propagation delay is uh, is is equal to each other, uh, we can get we can get the this term <coughs> as zero. So there's only the R A minus R B. It's the ideal assumption. Uh, next, I will introduce the dual one we running in the real world. Uh, here is a, is a schematic of my system. We can see that 
there's a delta t. Uh, means it means a clock error at time t. -L. So they send the as I said before, they send the writing signals at the same time, but it's not the same time. They, 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 they both of them thought they send the signal at the same time, but for the slave, it has a clock error. So there's a delta t. And the master sends the writing signals to the slave, and the slave sends the writing signals to master. Both of them have the Transmit, transmitting delay and uh, receiving delays uh, during the due to the hardware delay and the tau ms and tau sm they won't be they won't be equal to each other because they are moving especially for GNSS satellites the maximum relative velocity is could be uh, 4,000 meters, a uh, kilometers per second. So that's a, uh, it should be conserved. Yeah, this is the, this is a, a duration derivation. We can conclude that uh, to get the clock error and the and the real distance between each other. The first term uh, is a pseudo range. The second term is a propag signal propagation delay, and the third term is a device delay. It could be eliminated uh, before they are the electronic devices of the of the satellites are injected. And I, as I am on the Elospheric delay. A uh, chi time is uh, is the uh, frequency deviation during the during the signal propagation. It's a, it's a very small value. And uh, DS, DM, and the other delays, we could consider them. Uh, we could regard regardless of them. So. Uh, the most important thing in my system is how to calculate the tau s and the tau tms. This is the uh, schematic of my relative motion composition. You could see that at time tm, the master satellite sends its range signals to slave. Uh, it's not like uh, the previous model like this. There's a relative motion. So um, the RMS and RSM, they are different. I derived uh, two equations about how to calculate the maximum uh, ranging error and the clock error uh, originated from the relative motion. The EMS is the unit unit vex of, of the RMS and the VLOS is the velocity of lambda of sight. And there are some other delays and some solutions. The GSM is the ground to station model. So uh, the tropospheric delay and cyclic effect uh, should only be exist in the ground to state uh, to satellite model. And to set uh, for for satellite to satellite model, there are you know, spherical delay, device delay, relative motion delay, and ideal propagation delay. And this is a, an adjustment of method. method. Uh, a 
of course, this is the, on the slave satellite site. Um, they, after they mailed the city ranges, they have to do some pre-processing to get extracted the clock error between the two clocks. Also, there are some delays, the, the stratospheric and the cyclic effect are only be valid in J7. Some other delays, device delay, other delays, they have some, that they have the corresponding method. So, assuming I, I got the, a pure clock error, after that, it's, it's noted that there's an estimate clock error. This is because um, the two satellites get the, obtain the uh, ranging measurements uh, on their on their site, but they don't know the uh, what's what's the ranging measurements on their of their other site. So in in Greece, they send the ranging measurements to the ground station. And the ground station. Uh, process these informations, but in my system there's no such a ground station. So I need to transmit the ranging information from master satellite to uh, slave satellite. So I use the uh, CCSD, as it's a space link protocol uh, to use for data frame design to transmit the ranging signals. And there are some simulations. This is the risk baseline and relative velocity. And this is A2 and T1. Uh, the reason I choose the, these two scenarios is that they have significant patient different baseline and uh, uh, relative velocities. You can see that in Greece, the baseline is nearly 200 kilometers, and the relative velocity is 200 meters per second. Uh, but in Beto, A2 at G1, the most, uh, the maximum relative velocity could achieve nearly 3,200 meter per second. So I use the quotients I derived, I derived to eliminate the uh, relative motion error. You could see that uh, for this, the clock error before before correction uh, it could be 15 nanoseconds. Uh, after the correction, the clock error between each, uh, originate from the relative motion will be eliminated. And it's the same as the Beidou and A2 and G1. And this is another simulation. I model, I model a clock with particular uh, parameters, the data are offered by uh, my sponsor. So this is a, a particular voltage control setting, after store oscillators. And uh, I use them, uh, I use it as a slave clock. And uh, the master clock is assumed to be absolute uh, precise and uh, accurate. So, the initial, the initial phase error is uh, is ten nanosecond, and uh, the phase uh, phase drift and the clock uh, frequency drift uh, they are set to uh, nearly nearly uh, one picosecond per per second. And we could see that after the synchronization, the 
uh, the synchronization performance would be much better than the free running clock. And yeah, a, a post, uh, the performance in, in Greece and in Beidou, uh, they are identical the same. Uh, of course, I use some efficient methods to eliminate, eliminate the errors. This, this is a control procedure. I use three order PLL to control the clock deviation. You could see that in both scenarios, the maximum error is uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.02 nanosecond. And I made a conclusion. This uh, comparison between my proposed system and uh, the existing uh, systems. We we'll see that uh, we do uh, have the atomic clock and the crystal oscillator, and the other systems have crystal oscillators. But my system uses. Uh, do one way ranging moment to extract the clock error. And the, uh, the clock error between, clock, uh, between each clocks could be eliminated uh, physically, not compensated by some, some useful methods. And this, it could be station independent which means it doesn't rely relies on the station, ground station, and the precision you could achieve uh, 0 0.02 nanosecond. Of course, uh, I have a reason to believe uh, it would be this. This would be worse when when we operate in the hardware test because the device delay should be. Uh, have a nearly point, point 0.1 nanosecond at least. And I made some uh, results. Uh, this uh, the requirements offered from uh, offered by by my sponsor. And the, there are my simulation results. So all of them are satisfied. Uh, simulation layout pole are developed by uh, via MATLAB. This, I translate the, these parameters. Uh, actually, they are Chinese, like this. And some of my future work. And this law is deteriorates when being actively controlled via voltage control. I didn't uh, model this procedure in my current simulation because I I can't uh, model the process. I need some hardware to to get some results and some other elements such as satellite attitude, outside temperature pressure, and seasonal variations should be concerned. The time synchronization in holdover mode uh, sh should be concerned too. Mm. It's because in my current system, the, the communication relies on the line of sight communication, which means when the, when the uh, master setup cannot communicate with the uh, slave setup. Uh, we need a solution for that. And that's all. Thank you. Any more questions for Java? Yeah. Uh, could you explain a little bit 
about the experiment you can download with Nomuro V3.2? Which one? No, the block diagram with Nomuro V3.2. This one? Uh, no. This is more detailed, so you go to a... I think it's at the, the beginning. At view. the beginning. So if you go all the way up, there's a block diagram with the one PPS. This yeah, yeah, this one. Oh. And uh, this this similar to I think is the spirant. Uh, so it and, gives and you the color of the extra. So it gives you the block. Yeah, it, it's a it's a one PPS signal. I okay. transmit the one PV as signal to frequency count, uh, counter. Okay. And uh, there's a comparison. The comparison is like this, uh, like like this field. So you compare with Nomuro's oscillator frequency. Yeah. But there's a there's a one PBS signal output from the uh, Nomuro. Okay. So, how does it relate with? Because we, in, we were talking about Nambu has a only crystal oscillator, right? But you were talking about the VCX. So yeah, Nambu has a TC VCX. So okay. So it can uh, its phase division can be controlled. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, the the precision could achieve twenty nanoseconds mm -hmm. right now. But I think it could be worse because I will just do the test in the as an exer. It's not. Uh, it's it, it haven't been launched in space yet. But they sh uh, he should uh, they should concern with the uh, uh, elospheric delay. Mm -hmm. And the second question is. So you talked about grace and QZSS, so you have you used the real data from grace and QZSS? Or the me measurements are simulated? This one? Data. Uh, you have showed some oh, yeah. re results, results on plots. plots on grace and QZSS. Yeah, they, they, these plots. Yeah. So are they based on the real data? Yeah, so the real data generated by SDK is a software. That's not real data. Oh, that's not real data. I simulated the inference error. So okay, that's fine. But uh, what I experienced from my pre previous works is that when you simulate and then do all the estimation and everything, it's really fine. But if you try to work with the original data provided by DLR, yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's okay because in in my system I just present the, uh, my relative motion composition method mm -hmm. could uh, could uh, eliminate the relative motion error, okay. uh, whatever uh, the center is. Uh, like uh, for Greece, uh, they have. Uh, 200 meter per second velocity, and for weight of the have 3,200 meters per second velocity. Th th this is the information I want. So I don't care about the orbit. Okay, but these information you give. I care, I care about the baseline and the relative velocity. So. Uh, I don't care about the, uh, the real orbit data. But those data are coming from some receiver, right? Yeah. If I assume that the receiver should be there. So whatever the orb orbit be, but in real scenarios, the everything will be different than the simulated ones. Yes. Uh, so, so, so the dynamic error. Sorry, please continue. Uh, they, they, can divide, they can be divided into two parts. The Doppler, Doppler frequency and the uh, inferior error, inferior error, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the Doppler uh, are calculated by the relative velocity. 
and uh, infamous error, as I can't deal with that, because the, that depends on the orbit yeah. information. But only not those errors that we've got of noises. And the data is not really, I, I would say that the measurements you have generated in simula simulation yeah. would be in, and the act real actual data, what you get from Grace, yeah. that, that would be different and processing would be really difficult. So uh, uh, I would say that if, this is just a suggestion that if you try with the real data then and see what happens. Yeah, okay. Um, I think the, the, the results won't change. But you're, you're, you're looking at positioning. He's looking at timing. So, just... <laughs> yeah, it's, if you look at its equations, um, <laughs> The, 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 the adjustments that he has to make to the mm -hmm. timing is entirely independent of the absolute position. Yeah. It's, so it's only dependent on the relative position. You, you could that see it from the, this portion. Mm -hmm. uh, the only information I need is the velocity. So his system doesn't require any information on the position of the satellites at all to do time synchronization. Okay. Yeah. But still, the velocity. So it's coming it's from Doppler measurements. So no, no, it's it's coming from ephemeris models. Ephemeris. So and he assumed in his um, experiments yeah. um, errors in the ephemeris model, yeah. and be able to compensate for that by using. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Okay. Can you go back to the to the slide uh, where you have the comparison of the timing? Um, accuracy between all the different systems, mm -hmm. Namuru. Okay. So, can you explain why why your method is so much so more accurate than the others? Uh, which one? Is it because of bandwidth that you're using? So your you said your your proposed system is zero point zero two on the lower right corner. Yeah. And everyone else is only zero point one or zero point two nanoseconds. Yeah. So, the the main reason for that is. Uh, the difference comes from uh, first uh, it's because the clock. If if I use an expensive clock, uh, the timing performance uh, would be much better than a cheap uh, clock. So take Beidou for example. They use uh, the crystal oscillator. As far as I know, it could be uh, at least at least uh, uh, one. Uh, one thousand, one thousand, uh, ten thousand, uh, Austrian number at least. But uh, for Greece, uh, for for Namuru, uh, which which I, I may use a uh, the, the crystal oscillator, uh, the most expensive cost crystal oscillator he used is uh, costing him. About one hundred or two hundred dollars. So the the model that you use as a slave satellite crystal oscillator is actually much better than yeah. everyone else. That's why it's so much. Better. Yeah, it's used for the, for the navigation systems. I think that's it. Thank you.